What's going on all you mentees? This is the Uncanny Omar from Near Mint Condition and join me today for an overview of the Superman and Batman Generations Omnibus from DC Comics. Let's get started. Alright, so this is the Superman and Batman Generations Omnibus from DC Comics. It came out this week and it was a book that I was on the fence about. And you wonderful people, all you viewers and subscribers, talk me into buying it. It was one of these that I was like, eh, I don't know. I wasn't the biggest fan of John Byrne's artwork towards the late 90s. And that might be blasphemous to some of you all. But I really enjoyed his work in the 80s. All of the 80s. I love John Byrne's artwork. Um, basically when it was inked by several different inkers, but my favorite always being Terry Austin. Sorry, I'm talking in. Here is what the spine looks like. So you have the classic look to Superman and Batman, and then you have the possible future Superman and Batman. And then in the back, you have an older Superman and probably an older Batman, Dark Knight Detective. Uh, the book retails for $75. Let's look at it under the dust jacket. But yes, this is one that I was not going to get. Then everybody brought up a good point. Omar, how am I supposed to know the build of the book or whether I want this or not? Good point. So I went ahead and got it. Thank you all for reminding me. Oh, that's cool. But that is the reason why I have a YouTube channel. So this looks like a connecting image here from the covers, probably from the later series, when a lot more of the DC cast is involved. Separated by the spine there again. But let's look inside and take a look at what the contents are while I talk a little bit about it. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this open. We have some white bookend pages and quality control at the printer sometimes lets things like this slide by. What are you going to do? Uh, Superman, Batman, Generations, Omnibus, all of this written, drawn, inked, lettered by John Byrne. Here's the colorist. Uh, Generations 1 and 2 by Trish Mulvihill, and then Generations 3, Alex Sinclair, who I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with with his work with Jim Lee. So here's the intro. By the way, I did read all three of the intros because these are the things that really get my attention. All of them written by John Byrne. This one's written in 1999 when the first series of Generations came out. So Generations came out in 1999 and it was a four issue limited series in this thick format called the Prestige format. Then in 2001, we had Generations 2 or what John Byrne likes to call G2 and also another four issue miniseries in Prestige format. And then in 2003, there was a 12-part maxi-series. So no longer in prestige format, but 12 single issues, and that is known as Generation 3. So those are the three generations that we're going to be talking about today. Uh, now, this book right here has 680 pages. And we're going to be looking at some of the stuff that I've read and what it is. So the very first thing that you need to know about this particular omnibus is that it that, oh my gosh, Uncanny Omar talk pretty one day, is that none of this stuff is canon. This is part of the Elseworld Tales. Much like Marvel has the what-if line, DC has Elseworld Tales. Uh, the book that I did an overview of, the Batman Goth Gotham by Gaslight, that one's also part of the Elseworld Tales. So multiple realities, this is an alternate reality, it's an alternate take on Superman and Batman. None of this stuff is canon and has happened in the main DC universe. And as a matter of fact, John Byrne explains why he decided to write this book this way, because he talks about the H and the C word, pretty much the history and continuity. And history and continuity seems to bog down comic book readers, fans, like myself. You know, I always talk about continuity or things being retcon. I get upset when writers don't know the character's voice or what's happened before. John Burns goes into detail about that. Talking about actually the creators of Superman and Batman retconning their own stories. So that was a pretty interesting read. So if you're not familiar with the Golden Age, that it's pretty interesting to go back and read all this stuff. Now, each one of these takes place a decade apart in the first generation. So it kicks off with 1939, where the dynamic duo Superman and Batman meet for the first time during the Metropolis World's Fair. And here they come to realize, like, oh, Superman is Clark Kent, and Batman is Bruce Wayne. That's pretty much their meet. And then we're introduced to the villain who was the main villain of Superman for a long time before Lex Luthor came around, known as the Ultra Humanite. There he is right here. And we also get Lex Luthor in here, and eventually, like you saw, we get the Joker. But this is pretty cool. So for the next, uh, I want to say this stops in 1999, 
if I'm not mistaken. So it goes decade by decade from 1939 all the way up until 1999. And then there's kind of an epilogue issue in the very first generation's miniseries, which is the 2919 era. But the characters are aging in real time, characters get pregnant, uh, their offsprings take over their roles as superheroes, and there's a lot of freaking misery in this. And I mean that in a good soap opera-ish kind of way. There are characters that are betrayed, there are characters that die. So it's not the happiest of stories, I will say that. Not... It, honestly, it is the way that an else world tale should be, or a what if story that you're taught to appreciate the main continuity because this is the way it could have gone. Which you know, Dick Grayson ends up taking the role of Batman. Uh, Bruce Wayne Jr. takes up the role of uh, Robin. But then things don't always work out the way that um, we intend them to work out. So let's fast forward a little bit here and look at some of the artwork from his later years in the early aughts. So this is the Generations 2, what he calls G2. Now, Generations 2 is pretty interesting because what he did, this is all based on the intros, by the way, I haven't read any of this stuff, is he did it by 11 years. So he kicks off in the year 1942, and then there's uh, 1953, then 1964. Now, this one really like gets a lot of the DC Universe involved here. You see characters from the Justice League, you see characters from the Justice Society of America appear during this miniseries. So it's a little bit different than Generation 1. And even the art style is a little bit different because he, he was changing his art by then. Colors are a little bit different. And this is the connecting covers that I was talking about. But this is one of the books I was talking about where other characters from other lines appear. You have the new gods make an appearance here later. And as I mentioned earlier, the characters are aging in real time. And then that takes us to the finale, which is known as Generation 3. And again, all written, drawn, lettered, inked by John Byrne. Let's look at those. Now, those are a little bit different because those are literally 12 issues and they're all done by centuries. So we started in century number 20, then we go to century 21, 22, 23, and so on. Now, they do go back because after century 25 or 26, rather, I noticed they went back to century uh, 19. So, I haven't read this stuff, so I don't know why that decision was made. Now, I'm sure you could tell when I was flipping through here, but just in case, the covers are on the left-hand side or in front of whatever the chapters are. So, for example, as I was showing this earlier, this is the cover to the 1964 issue of Generation 2. But remember, we go from 1939 all the way to 1999 in this volume, the Generations 1 volume. So, not every chapter is broken apart by a cover. Definitely censoring that last definitely censoring that last page to just show off one of the covers. And the covers are always the same. It's Superman and Batman standing in kind of the same pose while there are things happening in the background that occur during those volumes like that. It's pretty awesome. Not sure I dig the hair, but hey, whatever. Now, let's look in the back here for some extras and then we'll talk about the binding. All right, so here is the roll call of the generations, because as far as the public eye is concerned, they only think there's only been one Batman and one Superman. But like I said, sometimes their kids take over their roles as superheroes. But here's the roll call of generations that you will be talking about, or you'll be reading about in this particular omnibus. Then of course we have Batmite up here, uh, Mr. Mixius Pitalik, which I would suck at pronouncing his name backwards, this Supergirl. Who is this Supergirl? Well, you can find out by reading this book and then a shot of Superman and Batman, which is the cover art to an issue um, in one of the prestige formats. John Byrne's little bio there and then the new generation of superheroes. But that's pretty much it. That's that's all the extras. Not very much. Let's take a look at this binding. As I mentioned, the book has 680 pages. Here is what the eye looks like. It is sewn binding. You can tell that there's excess glue down here, which happens, you know, in DC Comics, and sometimes it keeps um, the book closing, but over time, it gets better. It's not it's not the end of the world, I promise. that it, it does get better. And this book isn't that bad, honestly. Like, this is the very first issue we're looking at. I was looking for some spread pages when I turned here. Um, honestly, not that many towards the beginning. And there's a couple of things that are definitely spread pages that I don't want to spoil for anybody, so... Yeah, let me see if I can find some towards the middle or the back. All right, Burns not the biggest believer in spread pages. 
Uh, and there were a couple that I found, but like I said, they kind of spoil things. So I don't want to do that to anybody. But as far as the paper quality is, thick, glossy paper. You can tell from the finish by the glow here. And the, or rather the reflection of the light, not the glow. The book isn't kryptonite. But anyway, that, as they say, is that. Now, if you're interested in purchasing this, don't forget to check out our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online source for collected editions up to 50% off retail price. Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on excellent packaging, so your stuff gets to you in excellent condition, and they have amazing customer service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And for all you minties that are watching, if you're a first-time customer, don't forget to mention that Near Mint Condition sent you their way for a promotional credit on free shipping on your next order. Now, this is only for US customers. CheapGraphicNovels.com, your source for the hottest books with deep discounts, customer service, and excellent shipping that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content, the page count, and the build of this omnibus. Let me know in the comments down below. If you've read the stuff and you're picking it up in this format, if you've had the trades, if you had the original single issues or the prestige format, I would love to know all that in the comments down below. What you thought of the story. Like I said, I've only read the first... I think it's six or seven, the first seven years of the first generation. So it picked my interest. I've always been a fan of these Elseworld what if stories. So I kind of figured I would like it. But let me know all those comments down below. And if you have any more questions, I would love to answer those. Leave those as well down there in the comment section. Again, don't forget we have a Patreon and you can join that. There's different tiers for that. All of that information is in the description of this video with a link to our Patreon. More importantly, all of you, stay healthy, stay safe, and much love.